Hello my soccer universe. Well, the main part of your qualifying is over. We know 21 of the 24 teams that will be at the Euros. Only three spots are left due to the playoffs. And the mood in the host nation couldn't be lower. And it's not often that I start with a friendly. And yes, I understand it's Austria against Georgia, Germany. But this is where I need to start before we go then to uh, the remaining qualifying uh, rounds, matches that actually mattered, where uh, things had to be decided. We also talk a little bit about the upcoming playoff, draw in a way, and then we also will talk about the pots, because that's also really, 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 really weird before looking ahead to Germany next year. But speaking of Germany, you thought when Julian Nagelsmann took over and they had this tour of the US and Mexico that, yeah, things are on the turnaround. And nah, it's everything but at the moment. Uh, they had two friendlies against Turkey and Austria. Turkey at home, I think in Berlin. I mean, it's basically a home match for the Turks, if you would like. And it didn't go that well. They lost already that one, 3-2 at home. Uh, with some weird formation, Howard as a left back in, in a way. Did not see much of that because I usually don't pay attention to the friendlies. But the way things uh, panned out yesterday, I actually thought, yeah, I watched the uh, uh, Croatia Wales battle, but I need to have an eye on Austria v Germany because it is at the moment considered the biggest rivalry, although historically it's Austria Hungary, to be honest. And Austria took Germany to town. They completely destroyed their neighbors. I mean, this was dominance that I have never seen an Austrian team inflict on a German team. Ahead of the game, everyone said, if you look at the lineup, I mean, the Germans definitely have the better players. But Austria might be the better team. Not only might, they are the better team at, at, at the moment. The way they harried and pressured the Germans, uh, this was really awesome to see and that it was only a 2-0 result to Austria is flattering to Germany big, big, big time. I mean, there were so many good chances in there where Austria actually, and this is also kind of typical Austria, they then try to do it too cute instead of focusing, get it in, in into goal. This is the one deal, the difference. If uh, the signs were reversed, the Germans would have demolished us. Austria let Germany off the hook and because then it could have gotten really, really ugly for Germany. It's also kind of a show of, you know, where this Austrian team has come. A year ago, they beat Italy uh, at home 2-0. Now they beat Germany. Yes, those are not the top, top nations, but kind of shows Austria might, could do something at the Euros. Let's see how this will go. Uh, but it was exemplified by the stupid red card that Leo Rezone got. Uh, just out of nowhere, a friendly. Uh, Germany got a yellow and a red, and uh, Leo Rezone got away with one because he should have gotten a yellow much sooner. Um, and that they barely had any shots on goal. Only Lele Donschlager needed to make a save. It was comprehensive. It was absolutely comprehensive. Let's see where it goes. But let's talk Euro qualifying, uh, enough of friendlies. Uh, this time I wanna actually go um, a little bit uh, how it happened. We'll start on Sunday. It happened early between Serbia and Mont Montenegro, who, you know, from, from a distance, Serbia have, having the inside track. And it actually was a little bit nervy. At no point Serbia was out, but it didn't look all that. Uh, it, there was danger that Serbia took a lead over Bulgaria. Bulgarian team that had not won so far in Euro qualifying, which is a sad story in itself. At least this time around, uh, this window, they actually acquitted themselves quite well with 2-2 draws against the qualified teams. And then Montenegro, so Serbia had the lead. Montenegro took the lead and Bulgaria equalized. At that point, a uh, goal for Bulgaria would have meant that Serbia out. Uh, Bulgaria took the lead, but at the same time, Hungary also uh, turned the game, game around with two Soboslai goals. Uh, Serbia could equalize and Hungary added a third one. But gotta say, was, um, it was that, that there was a little tension there. Let, let's put that away, which is nice to see. But Serbia qualified for the first time ever they qualify for Euros as an independent nation. That doesn't sound right, but it is correct. I mean, yes, the last time they qualified, they were still Yugoslavia. And since then, they only qualified for three World Cups, but never for the Euros. 
that in reverse checks if you would like. Then uh, Belgium secured first pl uh, spot in their group, meaning they're going pot one with a 5 0 of Azerbaijan. Yes, they were a red card in there, but also Roman Lukaku scoring four first half goals. He means he's now the top goal scorer in Euro qualifying, but also uh, that. You know, I think he is now a record holder in for Belgium as well. So that was uh, comprehensive. Uh, everything in Group J was rather, um, you know, uh, straight, straightforward. Then there was only the matter, will Scotland go into pot two if they would have beaten Norway by two goals and overtake Austria? I think Scotland were wise to not do so. Uh, they were twice uh, behind against Norway and Norway that was without Erling Haaland. Uh, they turned the game around and laid on uh, Norway can equalize, but it ends in a 3-3 draw, meaning Scotland are now uh, second in, in the group. They are in pot three. As we'll see, that's not a disadvantage. Spain win the group with an easy 3-1 win over Georgia. The Tuesday games were a whole lot more exciting. Uh, let's start Group E as we have it here on <laughs> on the screen. We had the Czechs uh, winning against Moldova, relatively easy, 3-0. If Albania at the same time would have lost to the Faroe Islands, and you know, all of them were celebrating because Albania was already qualified, the Czechs might have even won that group. Uh, interesting enough, Coach Slihavi uh, then resigned right after the game. Seemingly, there are some, some things going on in the Czech trip that I was not aware of, but uh, that was a weird one. Um, then we had uh, North Macedonia, England 1-1, uh, Group H all. I mean, there was the head-to-head um, -head between Slovenia and Kazakhstan. That actually, Slovenia took the lead through a penalty where I have, have to say the penalty foul. It should the player should have never gotten in a position to make this foul, to be honest. So Slovenia held in a 1-0 lead. Um, Kazakhstan equalized, pressed forward, that allowed Slovenia to create many chances, which they eventually took. Uh, so I think it was always going Slovenia's way. A draw would, would have been enough. And then the little matter of Ukraine, Italy, which is probably the game of this entire round, was very atmospheric, very respectful. I think this uh, had more the feeling of a, you know, a, a, a game at a finals than a direct qualifier with a home game for Ukraine. Uh, there was no whistling of the national anthems, which unfortunately is ca came back after the after the uh, the COVID break, and I hope this goes back uh, again. Um, Italian players, I mean, uh, the game is, is itself. There was you could feel there was a lot of respect between the two teams. There was no nasty fouls. There was no uh, you know going at each other. It was really really interesting. It was also a really good game without goals, and. Both teams went for it. Uh, both teams had early chances. Maybe Ukraine the slightly better ones, but I think after 15 minutes, the Italians actually had settled that game and were in control of it. And the only thing that didn't is score. Uh, and I'm looking for, for instance, at the Fratesi chance that it just has to be a goal. It also has, has to be said, I do not understand why Italy against Ukraine is a yellow v white matchup. That just looked awful. I mean, it... Uh, Yellow and blue are what much better. To boot, this would have been the colors of the Ukrainian flag. I think a major chance missed right there. But yellow v white, uh, I, this is something I don't want to see. It's probably my least favorite jersey mat matchup. Um, and I think Italy were in control even early in the second half. However, then things started, you know, uh, Kies are getting tired and, and so they see they're not converting chances. Ukraine becoming desperate. Throwing forward are uh, really pulling Italy under pressure, especially for the last 20 minutes. And then they should have gotten a penalty in stoppage time, where I do not understand why this was not a penalty, to be honest. Uh, I wished it was not a, a penalty, and maybe because Mudrik was falling over a little bit too easy before, but at least the, the, um, uh, the referee should, should have watched this on the screen. If he would, he would have watched this, it would have been a penalty, I'm absolutely certain because there is contact, there's enough contact there for it to be a penalty. And even most Italians say uh, it was a penalty and that tells you something. But again, kudos to Ukraine. Coach Rebrov said, yeah, I thought I was a penalty, but if the referees didn't see it, then yeah, should be penalty. No one was really complaining about it. This Ukraine team needs to be at the Euros. There's no doubt in my mind about it. Uh, Italy barely made it, but they made it. Uh, I'm not denying I'm happy that Italy is there because Tournament without Italy is always a sad thing to see, to be honest. 
And then yesterday, uh, again, there was not much hype happening. Yeah, Greece, France 2-2, the winning goal for France because the goal and technology did not count. It was all coming down. Uh, the battle between Wales and Croatia, um, where, as I said in my short, 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 short video, Croatia took the lead. Uh, Wales had an early lead before as well. Uh, but before Croatia took, took the lead, yes, they had early chances, but Armenia could have taken the lead as well. And Wales needed the win and Croatia to not win, to make it through when Turkey equalized through a penalty. It was more or less done and dusted. And also Romania beat Switzerland. I don't understand where Switzerland is at, at the moment. They don't, do not look good at all. Uh, it's got to be said. Um, and so Romania win a group that no one really expected them to win. And yeah, that's also a good sign to see. Uh, from these results, before we go to the standings, we have the winners and losers. Of course, the teams that qualify in Slovenia and Italy, they are the big winners. Poland also, because the way the playoffs will pan out uh, is actually quite post positive for them. The Czechs are through, Croatia are through, uh, Serbia, Estonia have the playoffs secure. So, you know, those are all boosts, whereas, you know, teams that did not know, not quite fun, then they naturally are the losers. Now let's look at the overall standings. We see that Spain, uh, Scotland, France, Netherlands, England, and Italy have all qual qual qualified. Um, no need to say much there. Uh, we have Croatia. It looks much cleaner than it was before, but Croatia make it. Uh, that they didn't win, win this group is also a potential sign. Albania, thanks to the head-to-head -head win the group over the Czech Republic. Belgium and Austria with two of the best qualifying records uh, romp through their respective groups. Um, the one, the two points lost for Belgium were 1-1 uh, at home to Austria and also against Sweden where they decided to not play the second half. So I think it was all right that Belgium wins that, that group. They actually look really, really, really good, I, I, I gotta say. Um, we also have then Hungary and Serbia. As I said, Bulgaria does not look good. Uh, there's major troubles there. We also have Denmark, Slovenia going through Kazakhstan. You see it's in the playoffs. Finland is in, in the playoffs. Israel is also in the playoffs. Romania and Switzerland are through. Romania winning this group is a major, major sign, even without a loss. So uh, that's big, I would say. Um, and then we finally, Portugal, the only team with a perfect record. Uh, perfect records don't mean much, although Italy won it last time on a perfect record. But I think this is a Portugal game that you have to watch out for. On the other side also has to be said that this group was definitely not the strongest one. This was Portugal and the rest. And Slovakia made it because Bosnia is in the odd, not in a good uh, see a situation how this Bosnia team is in Nations League Group A is a little bit of a mystery to me. Uh, interesting also that in Group J, two teams are qualified and three in the playoffs. That's rather remarkable. Speaking of the playoffs, you see here a sample draw and most positions here are fixed. The only ones that are not is because we have only two League, uh, one t uh, League A teams meaning that Estonia makes it in uh, and we have five League B teams and you know only group winners get assigned slots so Israel and Bosnia are already assigned which means that Ukraine, Finland and Iceland can go anywhere and while I have them assigned here according to the standings uh, the positions of East Iceland, Ukraine and Finland can change. Uh, it, it will be according to the Nations League rating, but one of these three teams will go into Group A, uh, in, into the League A playoff. Uh, the Group C playoff is already fully fixed. And as I said, Israel and Bosnia, uh, we know that they will be there. Poland will play Estonia and then Wales will play one of uh, Iceland, Ukraine and Finland. Um, I actually really hope that Ukraine stays in the path B because I really would like to uh, Ukraine to come through and I think a Wales-Poland matchup for that actually sounds interesting. On the bottom, I honestly, I think Greece should be considered favorite favorites, but you know, Kazakhstan have been uh, quitting themselves very well and Georgia also and uh, don't underestimate Luxembourg. So uh, that will definitely be in in interesting, but there's a chance that we don't get a major, major minnow at the Euros. Speaking of which, I think this leads us now finally to the pots. Uh, for the pots, for the last three groups, the six uh, results against the six-plus teams were taken out, and then you rank the group winners and the runners-up. Germany already has a slot, and then the next five will go in pot one. The next six, meaning Austria's best group winner, is in pot two. Uh, uh, next, I'm in pot three, and Italy, because they made the draw, 
are now only in pot four. And I think pot four so far looks rather lowly with Italy, Serbia, and Switzerland. Boo -hoo -hoo. Those are not easy teams to, to be honest. Now, we can discuss about this seeding a whole lot. I mean, from one side, I like that UEFA is showing that there is a way that you can control in which pot you come. But pots should a little bit be reflective of strength. And the only thing they reflect is the strength in qualifying. And we can definitely agree that certain groups are easier than others. For instance, I mean, Italy played in a group with England and Ukraine. You're bound to lose more points there than if I look, for instance, at Slovakia, who had two losses against um, uh, Portugal. And then I think the draw is against Luxembourg. Is that really a fair assessment? So uh, this we should discuss and i would say a nation's league using a nation's league standings for the pots might work a little bit better it's maybe a little bit clearer to see if we look here for the pots uh themselves the draw will be held on the 2nd of december uh pot one looks really really strong i think you only want to have germany out of that one uh all the other teams that's tough but I would argue that pot two, two looks weaker than pot three, although uh, it very much depends. Uh, we could get a group, let's say, with France and then uh, France, Denmark, like Austria. I think those are the two strongest teams, although I don't want to underestimate hung hunger in there. Uh, then you have the Netherlands and then Italy. That's a possibility. I mean, that's a group of death right there, which will make it interesting. Potentially, we should put Croatia instead of the Netherlands because I think Croatia is a more potent team than the Netherlands at the moment. But, you know, there is quite some uh, interesting draws possible, but also we can get some really, really uh, dire groups as well. I want to end this video by looking at the favorite, the favorites, which are kind of reflected in the background here. France are the overall favorites, and I think that's a fair assessment ahead of England and Spain. Then I think Belgium, Portugal, Germany, I think... Well, we have said the Germany are in trouble. It's a little bit rem reminiscent of 2006 work about Germany also did not look good in France. Not, not as bad as they currently do, but they did not look good in the friendlies. And then they had an awesome World Cup. Let's see. The seeding though worked in Germany's favor, which I'm not sure it will happen here because uh, you could end up in a group, as I said, with Croatia and Italy and suddenly you're not the favorites of your, uh, in your group anymore, I would argue. So uh, there you go. I personally... If I, before we go back to the favorites, I would love a Germany, Austria, Switzerland group, and then maybe throw in Slovenia or Slovakia, maybe even the Czechs. I think this would be an interesting group from my perspective, just regionally in, in a way. In any case, uh, I think that, you know, the top three favorites seem to be pretty clear. Then there's kind of a broad field. Um, let's see, Croatia, Italy is really hard to tell, but uh, you see there's quite some variation uh, there goes all the way down to 20. Poland is the only non-qualified nation that's in there because Poland have still a relatively high ranking, but we have to see if they even make it to the Euros. So that was it from me. I will probably make a reaction video. I'm not sure if I will do it after the playoff draw or if we do it after the draw itself. It's probably better to do it after the draw itself. Uh, I think it makes a little bit more sense. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want some more videos like this and I'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!